What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Josh. Gentlemen, I don't know if we need them, but shots. Here we go. First on the agenda. <laughs> Cheers. Dude. Ooh. Rob, how you doing out there in Texas, sir? Surviving. Surviving. Survive. Hey, uh, I was on the phone earlier today with Danny. And um, I'm just looking out at the amazing view I got on my patio. And the pool guys, you know, clean the pool. And one dude just fucking dips in. Just, oh! <laughs> Missed a step or whatever. Just dipped into the pool. And it was pretty funny. So, I, uh, I had a good That's time awesome. today. I wish we were on Well, Facebook. hopefully he could swim. <clears throat> it's pool That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Josh, how you doing, this? Pretty good, man. Can't complain. Uh, not too much going on. Trying to count down the days left before the kids go back to school. Yes, I feel that 100%. How you doing? Then, Just hanging out, man. Working on stuff. Uh, you know, kids' summertime, so, you know. Just hanging out around the house, chilling. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've had quite the busy week with work. Uh, one more week of that bullshit, and hopefully things will die down a little bit. But other than that, doing all right. And uh, looking forward. We started, Danny, you started putting together the set for the shows. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting all that done. Realizing how much we cut out and, like, how much new stuff we're putting in there today. Where Josh was like, oh, we got a lot to learn. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a few. <laughs> I mean, it's been yeah. a minute. It's been a yeah. minute. Well, the one yeah, show no. that we do the hour long set, we've got a few more to learn on top of that. So, I mean, even for the half an yeah. hour set, we've got a couple that we haven't played yet that we're going to, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, so, for those of you who listen to the show and don't know, we'll be playing an hour set at Fellas. And that includes, that's our entire catalog, including the new stuff yeah. that's yet to be released. So. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it'll all be it, it'll all be released by the time the show comes up, though. So, yeah, but yeah. So, Rob, what are we getting into today, man? <clears throat> uh, today we are going to be talking about heavy music in culture. Uh, today is more specifically focused on wrestling. Um, for those of you who already watch the show, Mark and I are big wrestling nerds ish. Uh, as opposed to Danny and Josh, who we drag along through this, so they occasionally watch just to keep up. Um, but throughout my childhood in the 80s and the 90s, uh, music intro themes for wrestling was usually like some cheesy rock music. Like, eh, it was two minutes long. It was nothing to write home about. Uh, and then you started having artists. Um, intertwined with wrestling and then they did wrestlemanias but then you started seeing like actual music group performing the themes for these people when there was no themes before like in the 70s it was just walk out hey they're gonna say your name here's who you are bam a match and that's what it was but then they started incorporating music what yeah I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Hulk Hogan was the first person to have entrance music. Uh, I don't know about entrance music, but he had Rick Derringer do his yeah. theme. And so it was kind of like, oh, you got a up and coming artist and did your own theme. Um, but it still progressed even further to where you have such uh the, the, the genre of music that inspired this like attitude, which mm. incorporated into wrestling, inspired backyard wrestling and helped and helped push uh, ECW to what it was. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot that music, heavy music in particular, had incorporated and had an impact on culture, uh, especially yeah. wrestling. Yeah, most definitely, uh, especially during the, the Attitude Era, man. The Attitude Era, I think, is where, like, specifically heavier music, like the metal scene, made its way into wrestling. Um, Like, I remember 
Marilyn Manson's "Beautiful People" being the theme song for SmackDown for mm-hmm. at least at least two three years. So <clears throat> uh, that was one of my favorite and then, you know, games, eras yeah. of SmackDown. Yeah, that was one of and my then, favorite eras. But, but like uh, around that time, you had Rob Zombie in there doing Edge's theme. You yes. Know? So you had these artists, the Union Underground, with their music too. Uh, when they used it for SmackDown as well. Um, Raw, you had Papa Roach. You've had Nickelback. I know, hate him. But you get what I'm saying? Like, it was, it's this ear catchy music that they started incorporating with rock bands. They started pushing an artist for pay per view. Like, hey, tonight's theme is brought to you by this band. You download this album. They would push a new artist every pay per view. And they're doing pay per views, what? You know, at the time, I think there was like maybe eight or ten, and now there's one a month. And holy crap, like they're pushing an artist each month, and it was like something new. And check this out. But then they also had their albums as well. Like WWE, bless their heart, tried and was like, You guys want the wrestlers' entrance music? And it was like, Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, let's try something else because we keep releasing same songs every year on a different album but here's a newer version like cool. yeah this isn't rob selling. did you did you send me that video that simon cal produced the album oh yeah from from yeah. from american idol he produced that wrestling album which the was pretty crazy yeah. yeah yeah the wrestlemania but, album yeah i mean and that, i think they won an award for it yeah because of how well it was received within the community now, but yeah. I'm saying like you take, a, you take artists who are playing music and it's just like, oh shit, you want to use my song for a wrestler's entrance theme? Like, hell yeah. What does that mean to us? Yeah, exposure. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, do we get paid? And it's like, yeah, here's 50 bucks and a hand job. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like I don't know what they're going for these days, but... <laughs> It's like, yeah, we're going to use know, your music. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you're welcome. Like, we're we're playing your song to hundreds of thousands of people, plus it gets replayed mm-hmm. in all the re- previews and reviews and streaming services. And, like, it just makes sense, right? Like, here's exposure. All right. Yeah. Not like, not like Epstein Island exposure, but, you know. Oh, fuck. But you... Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe in some cases, I don't know. They haven't really done a deep dive into WWE with the Me Too movement. So, so, so uh, Josh and Danny, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, I were talking about music having an impact in wrestling. It's, being that you guys aren't really huge fans, but you used to like watch it occasionally when you were younger. Was there anybody's wrestler theme that specifically sticks out to you guys that you still like remember to this day? Like, you know, like, oh, shit, that's so and so. Or whatever. Besides Macho Man, I think for it's me, it's a good Ted DiBiase. Yeah, Ted DiBiase's got some great music. Yeah. That money, one sticks money, with me. Money, money, money. For me, yeah. besides Macho Man, <laughs> I, I don't know if I really exactly recall the song, but I always remember uh, Ultimate Warriors, you know, whole like, you know, yeah, that shit was badass. I remember, I remember that I couldn't, I couldn't hum it off to you like that, but I remember like when I was a kid going, that's it, Yeah, you know? Okay. I got a question or opinion for you guys on how you feel for Mark and Rob being wrestling fans and music. Chris Jericho and his musical career that he's built somewhat do coming from both aspects, being a musician and a huge wrestling fan. Do you think that was a, a good idea? Do you think the wrestling basically helped him launch that? Do you think that's something like that was good wrestling move wise for him or do you think that kind of killed his wrestling no oh um, go ahead rob you take it okay okay so what i was gonna say was um jericho's been making music for years he's been doing it for a really long time 
Uh, Fozzie's been around forever. Uh, it's just until recently that they've started semi getting bigger, especially now that like he had. So WWE never allowed him to use his own music for entrance music. Okay. So he was he was in a band back then. He was still he was in Fozzie back then, but he was never allowed to use any of that music on WWE television. Um, AEW, on the other hand, he's allowed to. So he comes out to what's considered, I think, their biggest hit right now. Uh, Judas is that what it's called, Rob? Yeah. And uh, I think just recently they just had like their most successful tour ever and their most uh, successful album release. Um, but I would I would say that. If anything, the wrestling helped his music career. You know, being a wrestler and getting to hear his music play over the intercom and the crowd singing every night, every time he comes out, their song. I mean, they did an AEW show at the, was it at the O2 in in England? Mm -hmm. And this guy's claiming that he, that Fozzie played the 80,000 people when they were there for the wrestling show, not for fucking you know for Fozzie so but he's he, he's out there he even he tried to do the whole Freddie Mercury thing before he came out it was kind of it was kind of embarrassing but like he's out there he's out there like yeah everybody you know came out to see Fozzie it's like no they all went to see AEW but congratulations you got your band to play that for so you know but that but that that's his shit like when he's heel He's healed. Yeah. Like, those yeah. people were there for me. And it's like, yeah. hey, man, brother, like, I'll be honest with you. My old band, we played a show. We set up this little show, and we had, like, 10, 12 bands playing this event. And this event was popping off, like, from noon to 1 in the morning. Like, we're going to do an all-day thing. One of our friends pulls up and goes, dude, I, I got a rapper buddy that wants to do a, a little set. Do you mind? And we're like, who is it? He's like, Coolio. And it was like, yeah, no, <laughs> come on. Yeah, tell him to come through. So Coolio runs through this joint, and it was like, we're doing, like, metal bands, punk rock bands, like, just electronic and shit. It was just like, okay, cool. And then here comes Coolio. Now, Coolio played after us, and then there was a band after Coolio because it was like, oh, we'll let John B. close out the night. Uh -oh. uh, but in between us was Coolio and then Jombie. And so I threw Coolio, like, hey, we opened for Coolio on our our EPK for the band. Like, because, hell yeah, like, we opened for Coolio. Like, that's how cross-platform we were, you know? Yeah. So saying, like, you know, the spin on it, so... Yeah, for sure. I, just, I, mean, I, th I think you use every every little angle. Like, hell, if if we got to get a clip on MTV, I'd instantly throw a scene on MTV. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, of course. Like, hell yeah. Claim the fame. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, 80,000 people. I just sold out this arena. Like, well, maybe you had a little help. This little wrestling event around your show. <laughs> but he, he still did it, you know? Uh, but like no, you, don't get me wrong. Like, Chris Jericho, I, I think he is one of the greatest in the sport. And let me tell you yes. why. One, uh, trained in the, the dungeon of Stu Hart, you know, he's, he's trained with the Hart family. He's, you know, he's doing the rock and roll. He's doing appearances on VH1 back in the nineties to two thousands, like starting to get his pop and he's getting exposure like hey here i am giving my opinion doing my two cents and it's like fucking amen to this guy i like this guy goes to wwe gets even bigger his band does better goes to aew helps launch that and it's fucking cute now uh thanks to my buddy bruce jingles he took me along one time when he got invited to do a episode of the Chris Jericho podcast. And so going to that experience, Chris invited me into the room and to sit next to Bruce while he's doing his podcast. And I'm like, I have no business even being here. Like, I'm just this guy's ride today. Like, I'll, I'll just sit here and listen. And they're like, here, but we're going to put a mic and headphones on you anyway. I'm like, uh, so if you want, go search the episode in the Chris Jericho podcast 
for Bruce Jingles and you can hear me in the background. Like, and it's so weird because I'm just sitting there as a fan, like, here's one of my favorite buddies, comedians, talking with one of my favorite wrestlers, Chris Jericho, and I'm like, uh, like, can I just get a picture? Just, <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was a trip sitting there, but. Um, I, I think Chris is one of the more genuine people within the industry and the business and is still humbled by it. Yeah. Um, so amen to, you know, even to Fozzie, if you think, even if it's a joke because it's a wrestler singing it, grow up, you know, you, you, we all need a little side hustle just to make it in this music business because other people who don't fucking make music are taking more of our money, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so. and and Jericho's a very dedicated person when it comes to both of these things because he's literally played a show, flew to a, a it was when they did the all in thing, Rob, you remember? Mm -hmm. He had mm -hmm. played a show that night and then he ended up going and showing up at the all in pay per view to attack a wrestler to set up a match for like a future event. And nobody saw it coming because no everybody way. knew because they knew that he was performing that night. And he literally flew in, still in his wrestling gear. I mean, still in his like concert gear, went in the back, put on a mask, attacked the dude, hits his signature move. And everybody starts freaking out in the audience like, no way, that's Jericho. And he pulls off the mask and it's him. You know, like it was pretty cool. He's He's done that quite a few times to where. He's like, there's no way I could possibly be there. I have a show to play, and he still does a bolt. So it's pretty cool to see that he goes that that extra step. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. How you but, doing, Danny? You good? Just <laughs> <Okay. laughs> sure. just checking for signs of life. Uh, you know? So, still, Danny, the camera's promising. <laughs> Danny. Yes. It's talking about entrance Ozzy. music. Let's let's blend the last days of war into wrestling. Pick a song of ours that you think makes a great entrance song for any wrestler. I think <clears throat> Home Sweet Hell for sure, right? Yeah. I uh, think that I like one. That choice. I think that one's, I mean, that and uh, I think maybe Breaking the Mold would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, mean, for sure. Josh? I agree with those two. I'll raise you maybe. a. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, away, maybe you a save yourself. Yeah, oh, uh, that's well, a good one, dude. Ooh, that's a good one. Dude. Hang on, <laughs> hang on. I know. Wait, Before hang, cage uh, match. okay, okay. So hang on. Yes, yes. But as of this episode. Not that song's many not know out. What the fuck that's, this that's is? That's why I hesitated. Like, like you I don't can't, know if I can you can't, it. like you can't really be like all oh, the shit that we're about to drop. <laughs> that, <laughs> like, hey man, it's called anticipation. I mean, good sell. I, like I mean, I, I, I like building. I like building some heat, and, and you know, just oh, you gotta hear what's coming out. Oh fuck yeah! But you can't just be like, yeah, that <laughs> the song. You have no clue. That one, <laughs> like that's that's how what I about, feel about. Oh, uh, what about you, Rob? Oh, for me, one hundred percent. Same. He's all, he's all shame and little karma. It's like shame, little karma. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, fucking shame yourself. Uh, I'll go Sorry, with go alpaca. Ahead. No, just <laughs> alpaca. <laughs> That's only funny to us. I know. <laughs> He's stealing the He's stealing what I'm saying. These poor people are just like, why do I even tune in? They're just fucking clowning amongst themselves. And it's, yeah, save yourself. <laughs> Every, everyone thinking it's Josh's way of crying for help. <laughs> no. Oh, Somebody goes, Josh. He's got deep. He's got CPS showing up at his house later. Oh, oh shit. No, I thought we lost him. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Pick one, Rob. Here. Oh, good. Thank God. Hide them. They're coming. <laughs> They're coming. No, okay. So, uh, for me, I I hear a lot. Like, if you're talking about an actual entrance theme, 
uh, 100%, I hear breaking the mold. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you could instantly see, you know, someone just getting amped up to that because it amps you up. That's what that little ball oh, here it comes. And you just, yeah. And you, and you feel that intensity. And that's just, like, if you can feel the moment someone appears through the smoke or pops through the curtain, or whatever it be, just comes out and you just bam. Oh, hell yeah, that'd be dope. And you can see him walk it down the ramp. Yeah, there's there's a lot of song. Um, I don't know, like for maybe for like a, uh, what is it? The uh, the Wyatt 6-6. Six, six. Um, maybe something like Heathens. Oh, that'd be dope. Um, yeah. You can even hear, um, God, this is going to be the only time you hear me say this. Into the stars. Could wow. Like, okay. <laughs> I didn't see that killer at all. <laughs> but for me, Into the Stars has that feel of like the Avengers. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so for Cody Rhodes to have an Avengers moment at WrestleMania 40 was just kind of like, hey, maybe Into the Stars would have worked for a montage of that whole night. You know what I'm saying? Actually, you got a, you got a great point. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think uh, Mark's got some content for the website now. <laughs> Take the yeah, montage um, clip that they did and just replace Creed with just us. Just replace it. <laughs> um, By the way, no, my favorite I, my favorite video package ever was uh, the Beautiful Day Triple H uh, comeback video video package that they did a long time ago. I think it was 2002, maybe, or something like that. But do you know what I'm talking about? When Triple H was injured no. and he came back, he tore his quad. And no. then he came back and they did like a whole video. It was like of showing him like rehabilitating and getting back ready to get in the ring. And uh, they used uh, Beautiful Day by U2. I just thought I love that video. It's pretty cool. But anyways, I did. Did somebody take his fucking man card? I swear to God. Like, <laughs> that was the coolest moment. It was dope, dude. Go watch the video. Like, dude, tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, go if you don't, fucking watch, dude. If you don't remember the video, like, that's oh, on you. Holy God, we hope. It was a dope video. Uh, holy crap, we're talking about I'm heavy gonna, music. You're talking about "Beautiful Day" by U2. Hey holy man, we're talking about heavy music. Yeah. You said "Into the yeah. Stars," so I, <laughs> it's at least by a heavy band. It's getting heavier. <laughs> Holy shit, we're working on it one song at a time, people. Just give us a minute. We'll get there. All right. Uh, Breaking the Mold is my pick. I like uh, Breaking the Mold, I think, is a good – it's got that – just that intro and the way it hits. And I think a, the close number two would be Home Sweet Hell, like Danny said. I like that. That's good. Yeah. So, Rob. Save yourself. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, to be fair though, that song's a, to be fair. To be fair, that song's a banger, dude. Yeah. Still, yeah. Wait, wait, hang on. Before we start pitching this song to people, like, don't get me wrong. Yeah, there's a song, "Save Yourself," it's coming out soon. Just wait. Pump the brakes. We gotta get. We got an order. We got a plan. We're trying to set it in motion. It's it, yeah. it's going quick, and it's quicker than we're anticipating. We uh, just hang on. Um, yeah, right, Danny? Uh, so we, we even have another song before Save Yourself. So Save Yourself is coming and the album is dropping this year. Mm-hmm. Now, let's take it a little slower. Little Karma is coming out August 9th. Correct. August 9th. Click the pre saves. Please click the pre-saves. If you watch this, if you listen to this, please go click the pre-saves. They save our ass and help us with the algorithm. Uh, yes, they very help much. us get exposure. It says that you people actually care about us and that we care about you and we care about what we're doing. So if we're all caring about each other, let's not be Karens and care. <laughs> nice. Anyway, Thank you. Speaking of speaking about uh, fans and caring about us and stuff really quick with the last few minutes here, I want to give a really quick shout out to one of our fans her name is amber who did an acoustic cover of remain untamed on tiktok 
And uh, she actually messaged the band page and told me that she plans to do a full cover of the entire song with more instruments. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. She said that what she posted there was just her doing like a one-time run through really quick, trying to get the feel of what she wanted to do with it. And she thought it would be cool to post that. So I thought that it was awesome. I, I, for those of you interested in covering our music anytime, I don't think you guys even know that you can do this, but just ask us for the tabs if you want them. Ask us for the chords if you want them, and we'll get them to you. So, <laughs> yeah, Danny? that's what she did. She hit us up. Uh, well, I think I think at some point that's probably going to be some of that's going to be on our Patreon at some point. Yeah, I mean, that, I let's we'll, do that. That's we'll great. Do, like, you know, probably be chord charts and guitar tabs, and probably some stems and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, that's we cool. About but yeah, man. Uh, I just thought it was cool to see, man. It's cool that we've reached a point to where people are digging our stuff enough to want to do their own versions of it, you know? Yeah, it's really no, cool, cool to see. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, um, I don't know about you, but that makes me feel honored. Like, oh, 100%, it, dude. Yeah. It, it's kind of like I hear like the Weird Al documentaries and like where he's asking artists like, hey, can I, can I do one of your songs? And to be just like, no, don't make fun of me. Like, shut up. Like, I I love some of the responses he gets from, like, bands that adore it. Like, Nirvana thought of it as a badge of honor to be covered by Weird Al. You know? Yeah. Like, if, if you took the time to say, hey, what you said was kind of important. Like, I love your message, but I'm going to switch it up and do whatever. Yeah, cool. As long as it's, you know doesn't hurt anyone else or it isn't fucking stupid yeah 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 man. You know, like you were saying though, the final stupid but. <clears throat> yeah like you were saying though big honor and we we appreciate it and you know if you guys ever take the time to do something like that for us we're going to take the time to repost it and make sure that you know that we appreciate it so uh yeah, and the top cool. ones will be put on our remix album that you can download next year that's right this time. <laughs> Uh, I'm not uh, gonna lie. Most of the remixes will probably be Danny and I just sitting there. So, hey, chop this one up. Put this one. Do this. Well, then we'll come up with different DJ names. Uh, but let's go back to what we were talking about, real quick. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you could redo any wrestler's theme song, who would you do? As far as like just just being able to remake it. Like is like with one of our songs that is currently out already, or just like making a brand new song for them? Uh, I would say taking one of their themes, so probably a wrestler with some words <laughs> in their theme song. <laughs> oh, and then I mean, re- and then redoing our version of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that we could do a killer version of Voices for Randy Orton. Okay. Yeah. Danny, you want to weigh in? Um, I think we'll do the uh that Cody Rhodes song I've been hearing. The one yeah. that's got that catchy that catchy little hook that comes in, you know? I think we yeah. can do something. You want to, Danny wants to drop a whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, totally different though. Josh, totally different. Um Josh? probably have to agree with Danny just because I'm not very good with theme songs with words. For wrestling, so probably the one that Danny picked. But if you gave me just a theme, I still want to do uh, Ted DiBiase. Make it heavy. Ooh. That, we, we, that technically has words, dude. Happen. We can make that happen. <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> Real easily. Real easily. I don't even think you need me on that one. Mark, you hit all of them. They're highs anyway. Oh, shit. Uh, what about you, Rob? Oh, I gotta go with my hero. Oh, John Cena. Oh, that'd be that'd be kind of cool, dude. John Cena. Yeah, dude. That'd John really Cena's cool. theme, all fucking heavy. Yeah, dude. Let's do that. Yeah, right. I'm, dude, I'm ser- I'm seriously in. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> you got, you got second verse. Oh shit! Start Dad learning like, your line. Dad is like, what do I get into, man? Look at all these <laughs> Now, you want to know the cool thing? Hey, here's the thing that I love about John Cena's theme is John Cena's theme uses the same intro as MOB's Any Up. Right? That, and 
and so it uses the same one just in the but the songs are different you know what i'm saying because uh-huh. Andy, Andy up is about hey give me your shit i'm robbing you <laughs> john Cena is just you know thugonomics like <laughs> thugonomics it's you know it's john cena his time is now and uh yeah. he by the way he just retired well, it's no he's announced his retirement. Anymore. He's still going to wrestle for the next year, but he's he's announced it. Yeah, that's cool. He, he announced his retirement. Like, I right, dude, after this, I'm done. Don't expect me back. And in the world of wrestling, we all have to still look at Ric Flair making an ass out of himself at a Chili's <laughs> and just feel like, yeah, you retired my ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, oh, who let that guy near the bar? It's crazy that he retired. He had his retirement match against uh, Shawn Michaels and then proceeded to wrestle for like another, what, 15, 20 years? <laughs> like, yeah. Just not in WWE. <laughs> just not I in know. WWE. It's just, come on. What did you retire from? Oh, my buddy Vince, uh, who I'm yeah. still good with, who I can come back to at any moment. It's like, Vince well, isn't Apparently that guy just needs a lot of money because he's got a lot of ex-wives that take half of what he has. So... <laughs> he just has to keep making that money. He's got to keep paying that alimony. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Alrighty. Any last words before we start wrapping this one up? Uh, August 9th, pre-save, little karma, please, for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it Danny? helps with the algorithm. Danny, got anything to say? <laughs> He's been doing this shit on purpose. <laughs> um, uh, don't drink and drive, wear your seatbelts, uh, drive safe. That's right. Josh? Keep them dry. <laughs> <So. Okay. laughs> Alrighty, guys. This has been the last days of Warcast. You guys, please check out all the links in the bio. It helps us out tremendously. August 9th, Little Karma dropping all streaming platforms. Pre-save link available. Check it out. We'll catch you next week.